In the previous videos, we discussed strategies like running the program after writing four or five lines of code, writing helper functions, printing variables. In this video, we'll discuss another class of mistakes. So we'll discuss how to deal with common errors like forgetting to define a variable before its use, making a spelling mistake, calling a function that does not exist, and then forgetting to convert a string to an integer, right? So we'll uh, also see what are some errors that are thrown by JavaScript when we make these kind of errors and how to deal with them. And we'll also discuss uh, how to identify the root cause of an error, okay? So we'll, this is the first case study. Uh, here we have a dummy program uh, which has three functions, one, two, and three. Here the function one calls two and uh, two does something, then calls three, three does something, and then returns, returns some value. Uh, this function one is called uh, in line 21 and it kickstarts the process. So like I mentioned, uh, don't worry about the logic. It does not do anything. It is uh, just used to illustrate an issue. So right now the error is in uh, line 18. So we are trying to return x plus y, but the variable y is not defined anywhere. So let's see what happens when we make this kind of error, when we try to use a variable before defining it. So let me run node read error message.js. Okay, so as expected, uh, error was thrown by JavaScript. So how do you read this error message? So firstly, focus only on the top few lines and don't worry about uh, these lines. Okay, we will get to this part later. So you can see that the error occurred at uh, line 18 in this file. And uh, specifically, the error occurred when the JavaScript runtime was trying to evaluate this expression x plus y. The error occurred because y is not defined. So reference error, some variable is not defined, means that variable does not exist. So JavaScript cannot evaluate this expression. So this is the first part, reading the error message and then identifying in which line of error, in which line of code the error occurred. So that's the first step. Okay. And then if after reading the error message, if you're able to identify the issue, fantastic. If not, then you have to Google the error message and find out why it occurred. Okay, so that's the first step, reading the error message. So now we'll uh, slightly modify the program and, uh, uh, you know, intentionally introduce another kind of error. So now it's clear, right? We, we found that the error is because we're, uh, we have uh, not uh, defined why. So depending on your program, you'll do you'll initialize y to something and then move it. Okay, now on to the next error. Mm. Now what I'll do is, I'll intentionally not pass this uh, variable x as an argument to three. Okay, now let's see uh, what happens. And then I'll uh, do like x times two here, okay? Now let's run this. Okay, now we got NAN, not a number, right? So now we have to go and figure out, hey, why did this happen? So now what we have to do is is isolate the error and identify the root cause. So now we can see that no error was thrown by JavaScript. It failed silently and returned some garbage value. The strategy to debug these kind of issues is to use a debugger, okay? So let's uh, try to do that. So you can either use, you can install a debugger or use something like uh, Python Tutor, okay? So let's go to Python Tutor and then uh, use JavaScript. So what Python Tutor does is it executes the code and then when it is executing the code on, uh, okay, by the way, the, this code is executed on a server somewhere and uh, when executing the code, uh, what they have done is they stop the execution of the code after each line and then find out the values of the variables after each line. And finally, the result is returned here. So yeah, let's see what happens. Right now we are in line uh, 21. Now we can just step through, go to uh, the next line here. So now we are at line seven and you can also see all the values of the variables here. So A is one, B is two and Z is undefined because this line is not executed yet. Okay, now we'll come to the next line. The value of Z is three. Now, if I click on next, we go into this. So you can see that function one 
has called function 2 okay a is 3 this a uh, variable a is uh, referred by another name uh, z over here so what was z here is now called as a in uh, this new function okay now the value of x is 300 okay let me uh, step through okay so now you can see that we called 3 without passing this x so x is now undefined in 3 in 2 it was defined it was 300 but in 3 it is still undefined now we went to the next line and what happens now is we are trying to multiply undefined by 2 can you get it value of x is undefined we are trying to multiply it by 2 so what happens when you do that so x equal to undefined and I do x times 2 I get not a number so that's why we finally got the result not the number when we executed that code so using a debugger is very useful when uh, solving these kind of nulli issues and another thing I wanted to mention is you can see uh, something called as frames here so this shows all the functions that are uh, still active so we have some global frame and then we called the function 1 and then function 1 called function 2 fun then function 2 called function 3 so this is also called as the call stack and we uh, when we when we saw this uh, error previously uh, where is the error let me just show it to you guys I'll change it back to x times y here so you can see all these uh, values right so the, this this part of the call stack these are all the functions that uh, were called before our function was called okay. so you can see here that uh, in uh, line uh, 18 column 14 so we have line 18 column 14 that's where the error occurred and this function is called by line 13 column 10 so in line 13 we this uh, function 2 called this function and then before that we have line 8 and this is column 10 so in line 8 this function 1 called 2 so you can see all the other functions in the call stack and these are the functions which are used internally by node.js before calling our function so you don't have to worry about these uh, functions so that's how you uh, understand the call stack and uh, python tutor visualizes visualizes it very well so i recommend you guys to use python tutor as a debugger so we can continue the execution of the code so we returned the value so you can see that we returned not a number and now once again we are returning not a number and finally we are printing not a number as the output if you want to get fancy you can also install uh, vs code and uh, use its own debugger which does pretty much the same thing so let me uh, start debugging but in uh, visual studio code the debugging process is more manual so let me start debugging once again the execution of the code begins in line 21 and we call this function 1 and then I can use this arrow mark to go inside a function this is called as stepping in and then we step in again and uh, you can also uh, look at the call stack here that we just discussed and uh, look at all the variables that are currently present so you can see that x is undefined and uh, if I go back to this function 2 we have this variable a which is 3 so you can observe all the variables so personally as beginners it's uh, better to use python tutor for now as you work on more complex projects you can use uh, vs code okay so this is about isolating the issue and finding the root cause of the issue like we saw the error was made here we did not pass x to 3 here but the expression that was affected was here in line 18 so an error in line 13 caused an error in line 18 so this is the symptom and this is the root cause during debugging we should always focus on identifying the root cause cool so that's enough for one video we will cover some of the other common errors in the next video